Janet Mui, you're a global economist at Schroders or at Schroders Wealth Management or Casanova. Now, we've seen the trade dispute going on for months now. Um, it's it's a, it's a, it's kind of an obstacle to to market. Um, when and how do you think could be could there be a solution to the trade dispute? Well, I think trade tensions is going to be prolonged. Our base case is that uh, trade tariffs is going to be applied on all goods traded between U.S. and China. I really don't see a very easy solution to this because I think ultimately the underlying reason of why U.S. is so tough on China is really because of uh, China's technological advance, um, intellectual property issue, which are you know very difficult to resolve. I don't think it's purely because of um, the, about the trade deficit. So I think things have to get much worse before um, it can get better. For instance, um, if American companies start to suffer more, if they see their sales dropped, and then if China have more serious retaliation, then the U.S. may start to think about if there can be a solution. But I think it's difficult. But the, the trade dispute does damage to both countries in a way, uh, but especially if seen in China, there's been damage to the stock markets. Um, so who do you think will be is more resilient to the to the whole dispute? Well, I think for now, the U.S. is definitely more resilient because, first of all, just from the amount of export that each country has, um, China suffers about four times um, more in, than the U.S. if you just look at the trade terms. And um, the, uh, the Chinese stock market has, has fallen by more than 20 percent. That is going to hit the domestic sentiment. So for now, definitely China is going to suffer more. But I think eventually the U.S. is unlikely to be immune from this trade tension. So um, um, maybe sometime next year when they start to see their import prices rising and then consumer confidence falls and they um, contract their spending then I think U.S. is going to, you know, suffer more. But I think I think overall, China, because it's, you know, it's more export sensitive, is going to suffer more at this stage. But as you're a global economist, I can ask you a global question. So China or Asia has long been the, the powerhouse of, of the world economy. Do you think that will remain like this in the longer term, I mean? Well, first of all, I'm Chinese, so I could be potentially a bit biased, but I, I think definitely China will continue to be a major player in uh, Asia and the global powerhouse. And I think one of the reasons is because of China's technological advancement. So, um, you know, China is, is no longer a place to manufacture cheap goods. It actually has moved up the value chain. And that is why the U.S. is so fearful of Chinese um, rise in technolo technology. And for example, um, you know, um, they are using a lot of artificial intelligence, machine learning to experiment, you know, how to um, use that on the uh, uh, online market, for instance, um, like the Alibaba Singles Day Sell is literally bigger than the um, U.S. Um, Cyber Monday and uh, Black Friday combined. And I think, you know, it's so vibrant, the technology sector uh, in China. And I think if the U.S. continues to be very aggressive on China, they are cutting the uh, electronics supply to China, for instance, in the future, then China is definitely going to need to um, explore their own domestic uh, options of supply. And that will, I think, actually propel China to you know, do even more research, put more money into the sector, and uh, even propel their technological advancement. So I think, you know, as China move up the value chain in terms of technology, China is definitely going to be an even bigger player. Initially, we were talking about market volatility. Um, going back to <laughs> the present situation, um, do you think market vol volatility will go on, especially also, of course, for stock investors? Yeah, unfortunately, we think that volatility is going to stay. I mean, we the past two years, we have witnessed very low volatility, which is not quite normal. I think now we're going back to a stage where uh, there's more volatility, first of all, because uh, we have the withdrawal of liquidity from the Federal Reserve. Um, I think uh, if you look at the spread between the 10-year U.S. government bond between the two year, historically, it's quite a good indication of volatility. And as the spread continues to narrow, we expect further volatility to pick up simply because, you know, the market has been going up for so long. The uh, situation has been so benign thanks to the huge liquidity, but that is going to end. So unfortunately, as the policy normalization continues, not just in the US, but you know, in Europe, in Japan, in the future, I think volatility is going to be with us for a while. But you say volatility, but not necessarily like something like uh, a crash in the next year. 
Uh, so we are not expecting a recession in the U.S. in 2019. I think it's too soon. They're still having a very robust economy. Um, the fiscal stimulus is still there next year. It's going to fade, but it's still going to be very supportive. So we don't expect a recession anytime next year. So we, we, we're not foreseeing any sort of like a crash in the market. I think, I mean, don't forget that although liquidity is being withdrawn from the system, uh, it's being communicated very well, it's very gradual. So um, I don't see um, a shock coming through in the system. But how should investors uh, position themselves? Yeah, I think for investors, I mean, this is very uncertain environment. Um, this year, a lot of assets are down year to day, so it's definitely very challenging. So I think the key is, um, first of all, to diversify your assets, um, you know, uh, just globally and also within various sectors. So diversify is key. And also, um, we need to be a bit more cautious in terms of our portfolio posi positioning. For instance, you know, maybe adding a little bit more defensive uh, sectors in the portfolio because after all you know um, growth like uh, technology sector has you know already um, um, done very very strong over the past few years and there's some signs that that is weakening so I would say um, be a bit more defensive on your portfolios and also diversify your portfolio.